Well, good morning. Uh, as you can see, this uh, room down in Rottenstall, uh, gateway room, the room is prepared for worship. The seats, they're uh, spaced out, at least a metre between all rows and seats, front and back. Everything is prepared. Everything is prepared. And here I am. Good morning. Welcome to the video. I don't know whether it's good morning, good afternoon or good evening. But in the name of Jesus, I want to invite you into this meeting, invite you into this video. I, I'm asking you now to, uh, to open your heart and open your mind and open your thinking. Just, just of the pure existence of God and the ability of of our God, our God, you know, in Isaiah 41, verse 13, God says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. And uh, we're talking today about uh, preparation, preparing. Uh, but preparing what? And so let's look at things that we have to prepare. Uh, for example, uh, I'm doing some painting at home at the moment, but before I could paint, I had to prepare the surfaces. I had to sand them down. I had to put the masking tape where I didn't want the paint to go. I had to stir the paint up. I had to, I had to clean and wipe everything down and get everything prepared before I could apply the new paint. Then I had to undercoat, first a coat of undercoat, and then the top coat, the gloss, but preparation is key. To, uh, to a successful outcome of whatever we do, preparation. You could uh, imagine a meal, if you're preparing a meal, uh, you're preparing a meal for the family or for your friends or, or for whoever, for yourself even, preparing a meal. You have to prepare the food, you have to take it carefully. Some food, if you're gonna chicken, if you want to have it with Chinese spices, you have to uh, uh, soak it in the Chinese spice, you have to cover it in the Chinese spices and soak it overnight to give that really authentic taste so that it soaks you have to prepare the food preparation is important if you have a garden <clears throat> and you're going to uh, take a plant and you want to plant it in the garden first of all you have to prepare the place that the plant's going to go you have to remove all weeds out of the way you have to dig down into the soil you have to remove all the rocks and all the stones that's there before you can plant, take this new plant and put it in the hole. But even before then, you put some additional food in there and you mix some extra soil, some good enriched, uh, food enriched soil that, uh, that will enable the plant to flourish and thrive. And you have to prepare the place in order for that to happen, in order for that to happen. And I believe that God has, has brought us to a, a place and a time of preparation. You know, if you look at the last messages over the last weeks, it's been about repentance, about preparing your heart, about preparing your life, preparing yourself. It's been, it's been a preparation time, and I, and I believe we're in a preparation time. Take the COVID virus, for instance. It's interesting, okay? We have to prepare ourselves in order to not catch the virus to not get something so in our preparation we take the hand sanitizer and we have to put the hand sanitizer on and we prepare ourselves and we clean and we wash our hands in the preparation to to get rid of any sign of the virus any possibility of the virus we have cleaners that we have to uh, use and a cloth that we have to we have to clean surfaces and with a cloth and prepare the place we have to remove everything so there's no chance of this virus getting us. We have to wear masks like this. And so we wear masks like this in, uh, to prepare ourselves in order to not catch the virus. We have to prepare ourselves. Preparation. So it's not all about preparation of, uh, of uh, a plant or a, a, a painting or whatever it might be. We can also need to pre prepare ourselves to protect us against, uh, against germs, against viruses, against sickness and against illness. There's a preparation. <clears throat> but within that thinking of preparation, okay, 
God wants us to prepare ourselves in order to be able to come into his presence, in order to, to know him. And in order to do that, we have to prepare our hearts. We have to prepare our lives. We have to prepare 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, Paul writes, And no eye has seen, nor ear has heard. For what is being prepared for us? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is the one who teaches us and prepares us. But prepares us for what? What are we being prepared for? And as we give our lives to Jesus, we're being prepared. Jesus has gone ahead of us. He's gone to prepare a place for us in heaven. And now I don't know about you, but that's something that we should be excited about and be prepared, you know, to be prepared for that, for that. And so we're told that uh, in, uh, in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 24, Jesus speaking to his disciples and he's talking about a time when the Son of Man will come again. You know, he's going up to heaven, but he's saying he will come again. The angels, the angels themselves at, at, the, uh, at the resurrection tomb, they said uh, he will come again. The, the angels, when Jesus ascended into heaven, sorry, they said, why are you looking? And said, he will come again. He will come again. That Jesus will come again. And in Matthew chapter 24, and verse 36, it says this, But about the day and about the hour, no one knows. <clears throat> not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So God, Jesus is going to come again. But there's a preparation to take place in order for us to come into the presence, in order for us to, that we would know him. And we have to prepare our hearts. We have to prepare our lives. We have to prepare ourselves. I can't prepare you and you can't prepare me. But I can prepare me and you can prepare you. And how we do that, how we do that is up to us. And, and the, amount of, the amount of work we put, in, we put into it. So for instance, again, going back to the coronavirus thing, there are people that might be doing the hand sanitizer, which is great, but they're not wearing the masks. So there's kind of like, think, well, I'm not wearing that mask, I won't get it. So in other words, they're opening themselves to infection. There might be some that is not cleaning their hands or cleaning surfaces. They're opening themselves to some infection. That they're open. There's always that weakness in the preparation. And in us, in you and I, in our faith, if we don't commit ourselves to God. So in our prayer time and in our worship, you know, we look at the church here like this. We look at the building that's prepared for men and women, men and women of faith to come and worship God. Why do we worship God? Because we're preparing ourselves to receive from him. When we prepare ourselves, basically what we're doing, we say, here I am, Lord. Take me as I am, Lord. Take me as I am, Lord. And the Lord God, that's what he does. He just takes us as we are. He takes us as we are. But there's a preparation. There's a preparation in order to come into the presence of God. The preparation in order to be saved. There's a preparation in order to go to heaven. There's a preparation. And for people who, who might just do a little bit of it, they're not preparing correctly. They're not preparing. Some people might just wear the mask. Just wear the mask. Like that. But there's no preparation. What about the hands? If there's no sanitized, no clean... The germs, the virus that can carry on hands can affect them. So there's got to be a preparation and so it is in our walk with Jesus Christ. So it is in our faith. We must prepare ourselves, prepare our hearts. In the Psalm 51 it says, create in me a pure heart. Verse 10, create in me a pure heart. We must prepare our hearts and lives, but create in me a pure heart. In other words, God, you know my heart. God knows your heart and he knows my heart. If you read that Psalm 51, you read it, it explains it all to you. That David, when he wrote that, he understood that there was stuff in him. That his heart wasn't always in tune with God. That his heart wandered and yours and mine do too. So we have to prepare ourselves. We have to focus and we need to 
give our lives to Jesus. We need to give our hearts and our time to Jesus. We need to prepare. We need to take our faith seriously. And you know, what stops us stepping out in faith quite often? It can be fear. But we need to be fearless. Fearless men and women of God. And fear is all around us. The fear of the coronavirus. We protect ourselves against the virus. But they try to fear. But break the curse of fear. And fear stops us from walking the walk. Fear stops us from, uh, from sharing our faith. From shining our light. Fear stops us from following God. From following Jesus as we should. Now imagine this jacket. If this jacket represents fear. And I'm going to come and, and share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. I want to get rid of the fear. So I want to get rid of the fear. Fear gone. In the name of Jesus, the fear's gone now. And now we need to be men and women, I've told you before, who roll our sleeves up. Men and women who roll our sleeves up and get stuck in to faith. Get stuck into this, start to believe this Bible, start to walk with God, start to take it seriously. Prepare ourselves. We need to be preparing our lives. When you wake up in the morning, open your heart to God. Prepare, Father God, thank you for today. This is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will. Praying in tongues, seeking the gifts of the Spirit. Paul said, eagerly seek the gifts of the Spirit. I told you before, when I first became a Christian, I, I heard about speaking in tongues. It, it freaked me out. It scared me. Fear got the better of me. <clears throat> and fear was all over me. When tongues, I'm thinking, whoa, I'm not sure about that. And then I went to the scriptures and I read in Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about speaking in tongues and I thought, wow, then I, I want that Lord. And so I prepared myself, I prepared myself and, and in preparation I kept saying, Lord, I want that gift of tongues. Would you give me the gift of tongues, Lord? For six months I would ask, eagerly desired, I eagerly, I was hungry and thirsty. What are you hungry and thirsty for in your faith today? What is it? I was so hungry. And then six months later at an amazing meeting where I just held my hands up. I surrendered my life to God. The full of spirit flew it full. The spirit flowed in. The power of God came upon me and I was so empowered and so set on fire for Jesus. He changed my life and he'll change yours. I was prepared, I prepared myself, I prepared myself day after day after day. And then God, poof, reminds me of the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 18, when he prepared the altar, remember up on the mountain of Carmel, and he, <clears throat> he prepared the altar, and as he prepared the altar for stones, and he took stones, 12 stones, to represent each of the tribes of Israel. Then he took wood, and he piled the wood on, then he took a bull, now the interesting thing about the, the bull is that the bull or the animals for sacrifice, they actually come under the authority of man because in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam authority over all beasts. So they're actually under the authority of man. So Elijah could take that bull and the bull couldn't do anything about it. And he sacrificed it and laid it on the bull, on, on the top of the wood. The bull had no choice because he came under the authority of man. Okay? And that, that was a sacrifice offered to God. And so there was a real preparation. Now Jesus Christ, he comes to the cross. He said he came. He was silent. He didn't speak. He didn't fight. He didn't try and stop him. He surrendered his whole body. He surrendered his life. Now Jesus' life, it was his, his body, his life, and his to surrender. And he surrendered it and he became the living sacrifice for you and I. And so his sacrifice now is on, now he's on our level. Jesus come up, he's come up. The bulls and the goats, they're are below us. But then Jesus comes up and he's on the same level. So the power of Jesus, the fact that Jesus came as a man, as you, the son of God, <clears throat> in order to bring us into the presence of God that we now, he's our sacrifice. We don't need to sacrifice our bodies as such. But we just have to accept his sacrifice. And we come under him. And that's why Jesus said, if behold I stand at the door and knock, if any man opens the door and lets me in, I'll come in and eat with him. And God, Jesus comes in 
and eats with us. This is our God. So he prepares us. But for in order for us to invite Jesus in, we have to prepare ourselves to surrender our hearts to him when Jesus comes in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now in Matthew 24, it said, they don't know the day. And then it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Noah. Exactly. It said, for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And up to the day that Noah entered the ark. Now, don't forget, now Noah was preparing the ark. I think for around about, I think it says 100 years, I don't know, but for many, many years, Noah was preparing the ark, preparing the ark, constantly working on it. People walking past him, shouting abuse, probably condemning him. What are you doing, Noah? Crazy guy, he's that crazy guy. And they were just doing their own thing. But Noah, when Noah was stepped into the ark and the flood came, he was saved. He was saved. Now you and I, you and I, we are like the ark that God has prepared us. God has prepared us through his son, Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And by the Holy Spirit, we are saved. We are saved. This is an amazing truth. So we need to prepare our hearts, prepare our lives in order to be ready for the coming of the Son of Man that the Holy Spirit comes in. It says in verse 39 of Matthew 24, they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. So it will be, it says. That is how it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. See, everybody out there, they might be doing the coronavirus thing. They might be doing all that and preparing themselves against the virus and that's great. But what if tomorrow's the day that the Son of Man comes again? Are you prepared? We need to be prepared. Oh, hallelujah, we need to be prepared. And God is saying, be prepared. I mean, so many people say that we're in the last days, in the end times. Well, I don't know. But we need to be prepared as if we are. Hallelujah. And then it comes down, it said in verse 42, it says, Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Keep watch. Be prepared. Keep watch, for you do not know on what day. The Lord will come. Keep watch. Hallelujah. We have to be prepared and we need to be prepared correctly. And some are prepared okay and some are not prepared okay. But in Matthew 25 on the next chapter, we're going to look at a situation where some were prepared well and some not so well, okay? And we're going to use this coronavirus idea as well in preparation. <clears throat> and, and hopefully... It will stir something up in your spirit. It will cause you to look at yourself because whatever the scriptures, whatever they do, the scriptures, they penetrate deep into the heart. The Bible says that the word of God, it penetrates so deep even to the, the cutting, even to the dividing of the flesh and the bone and the marrow. It goes right deep into the depth. And we need to invite the Holy Spirit but to come right deep in, into, our, into the depth. But we must be prepared. For what God would reveal. And when God reveals things, we must be prepared to do something about it. Are you saved? Are you born again? Can you confess that Jesus was risen from the dead? Can you confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead? Do you believe in your heart? Do you believe in your heart that he is the son of God? Then if you are, then you've started on the preparation. You're prepared and you will be saved. But it doesn't stop there. There's a parable, Jesus telling an example. Parable was an example, a story that he told in order to get a point across, okay? And he said, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took the lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. <clears throat> 10 virgins, and they had the lamps. The lamps there to show the light so they could meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Five were foolish. And five were wise. Five were foolish. Why were they foolish? Who knows? On the outset, they all looked the same. But Jesus said five were foolish and five were wise. So we need to look why, why they were foolish. And he tells us in the next, in the next verse, in verse 3, he says, The foolish ones, they took their lamps. Yeah, that were great. They had the lamps. <clears throat> But they didn't take any oil with them. 
the foolish ones. They have the masks. They have the masks. They're great. But they're never sanitized. They never cleaned. They were foolish. They were foolish. But he said that the wise ones, however, they took oil in jars along with the lamps. The wise ones, they took the mask. Brilliant. Sanitized with the hand gel. I've got to get this to work, it's not working. Sanitized with the hand gel on. That's what they did. Brilliant, well done. Cleaned. Cleaned everything. Well done. Brilliant. Well done. Done everything that they need to do. And stayed the distance. Kept the distance. Watched out. They were wise. They were wise. Anyway. Said the bridegroom was a long time in coming. See, they didn't even know. This is what Jesus is saying. It was a long time in coming. We don't know. It's 2,000 years plus since Jesus left this earth. So you could say it's a long time in coming, couldn't you? Could this be the time? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and they all fell asleep. They, they fell asleep. They were sleeping. Nothing wrong with that. Then he said, at midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom. Here's the bridegroom. Come and meet him. He's here. Here's the bridegroom. Wow. Come and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up. You can imagine them waking up. Woke up. And they trimmed the lamps. So they put oil in the lamps. They put oil in the lamps. But the foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil with no oil. We forgot to bring our oil with us. We, we forgot we, we're not prepared. We're not prepared. We don't have the oil. And our lamps are going out. <clears throat> our, we, we've got like a little bit of but our lamps, they're going out. No, they replied. If we give you out, there might not be enough for us. And there's certainly not enough for both of us, so we need it for ourselves. Instead, go and go to the shop, whoever's selling oil, and go and buy some for yourselves. Remember, it's midnight. Shops are closed. Who opens the shop at midnight? Closed. They weren't prepared. They weren't so prepared. Anyway, they went anyway. And he said, while they were on the way to buy the oil, they went to try and find oil. They went, they weren't prepared. Oh no, we forgot the oil. They went, they went, they went. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. It's a bit like uh, turning up quite often. Well, my brother-in-law, Anthony, um, he, he goes to, uh, he goes for physio in a swimming pool. Uh, hydrotherapy they call it and uh, he's in his re rehabilitation after he, he had a, 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 a horrific car accident but praise God he's he's working and he's preparing and trying to come back to be uh, to walk again I, I want to believe for, believe for Anthony to walk again in the name of Jesus I'm praying for Anthony anyway why am I telling you this because I go along and, I, and, and every Friday I, I would go along this was this was a, a while ago now when this, uh, I'd go along and and uh, to swim, you know. Of course, I needed swimming trunks. So, and I'd go in the water and help the physiotherapist. It was better with two people. So I, I'd, I'd go and help. And uh, everyone was great and I loved it. But one particular day I went along and uh, I'd forgotten my swimming shorts. I'd forgotten my swimming shorts. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. Couldn't go in the water. Couldn't help. No swimming shorts. I got some, but that's another story. But do you get the idea? I wasn't prepared. And so these people, these virgins, these ten virgins, five of them are prepared. Five of them got the oil. Five of them can go swimming. But five, they, they've nothing to wear. They can't. Gone looking for some bathing costumes. Gone looking for some oil. While they were on the way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. He came. He came. 
And the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. So they went in. He's arrived. You can imagine a entourage is all there. He's going into the wedding banquet. Now the door is closed. Everybody's in. Then he said, later. Don't tell us how long, but later. Maybe an hour, half an hour. I don't know. The others came. I wonder if they've got the oil in the end. I wonder if they had. I don't know. But said the others came and said, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, the Lord replied, truly, I don't even know you. Who are you? I don't even know you. They weren't prepared. They weren't prepared. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. The oil represents preparation. The oil, the Holy Spirit keeps our light. A flame keeps it on fire. The oil is a substitution. It, it's, it's, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said, I have to go to the Father. He said, I must go so that the Father can send the Holy Spirit. He's going to help you. He's going to prepare you for the great works that I've got for you to do. He's going to prepare you. Our preparation. Our preparation is in God. Our preparation. How do we prepare our hearts and how do we prepare our minds? We desire, we want to. We come before God and we open our hearts and we pray and we say, Lord God, search my heart, search me. You know me. You know me. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at Psalm 51. I've got to find Psalm 51. I can't not do, can I? Psalm 51. Let me find it. Come on. Here we go. Psalm 51. Have mercy, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out all my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. And he says, for I know about my sin, my sin is always before me. And against you only have I sinned, he said, and done evil in your sight. Even goes on, verse 5, surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful. And he asked him to cleanse me. Prepare me and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. And verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And then verse 11. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. We must be prepared. Now if the oil represents the Holy Spirit and the virgins, they are the, that means it's an ongoing thing. We leak. Not only do we leak, but unless we're continually filled, filled with the Holy Spirit, we can't do God's work. We can't do it. We're, we succumb to the evil one. It's a bit like unless we sanitize, wear the mask, do everything and keep our distance. Unless we do that, the coronavirus has an opportunity to get us. Unless we keep with the Holy Spirit, Satan. Peter says that, in Peter's letter, he said, the enemy, Satan, your enemy, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Are you going to be that person? Are you prepared for the lion? Are you prepared for the storms of life that you're going to enter into? You know, we talked about, uh, there was a great word in the week about, about the disciples asleep in the boat. Remember? Jesus was asleep in the boat. And the disciples woke him up, shaking him. Don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care that we're going to drown? Jesus said, you have little faith. You have little faith. We need to prepare our hearts and our lives. We need to prepare our time, prepare ourselves for Jesus who could come back any moment. Yeah, the world will go on doing what it's doing. But what if Jesus comes back? Are you prepared? He will come again. The Bible clearly says that Jesus is going to return. But are you prepared? Are you filled with the Spirit? Do you know his name? Do you worship him? Do you follow him? Are you prepared? Are we prepared? Our God is an amazing God. Our God is an awesome God. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. You know what Philippians 4 verse 19? Philippians 4 is a great, a great passage. Up here I've got here. Verse 13, Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. Who prepares me. No, 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 no. Who strengthens me. I'm the one that's prepare myself. 
I come before God and in preparation, just the fact that I'm praying to God means I'm preparing myself. Just the fact that I'm confessing my sins means I'm preparing myself. Just the fact that I'm opening my heart up and surrendering and inviting the Holy Spirit to come into my life means that I'm surrendering myself and preparing myself. All these are preparation. The preparation of our lives and our hearts is to lay our lives down. That's preparation. Lay it down. Die to yourself. Lay it down and invite Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit fill us. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be prepared. The word today is preparation. How are you prepared? How are you prepared? Am I prepared? Am I prepared? We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. In that verse, in that chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 19, it says this, and I'm going to finish with this. It says, And my God shall supply all your needs. And my God shall supply all your needs. And my God shall supply all your needs. Hallelujah. According to his riches. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus. My God will supply all your needs through Jesus Christ. Prepare yourselves by laying down your life. Prepare yourselves by opening the door of your heart to invite Jesus Christ in. Prepare yourselves by inviting God into your day. Prepare yourselves by following him and worshipping him. Prepare yourselves by believing in the one that he has sent. John the Baptist said, I come. He said, prepare the way. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. You know, John the Baptist was just a man. Just a prophet. Just a man. But he came, called by God, to prepare a way for Jesus Christ to come in. You know, we need the spirit of John the Baptist in our lives in order to prepare the way for Jesus Christ to come into us, into our lives. Would you invite Jesus into your life today? I'm going to pray with you if you'd like to invite Jesus into your life if you've never done this. It might be that you'd like to do this even again. It might be that you've done it, but you do it again. I do it quite often. Father God, I just pray. Maybe you would. Pray along with me. Holy Spirit, Father God, I pray that you would open my heart. I want to open my heart for you, O oh God. Create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me, your spirit in me, O oh God. I want to lay my life down. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of the thoughts. I repent of the things I've done wrong, O oh God. I repent of my anger and my impatience and my jealousy and my lying, Father God. I repent, I repent oh God, of my uh, untruthfulness. I repent, O oh God, that the desires of my heart hasn't been of what you would desire, O oh God. They've been what I desire. So would you open, enable me, O oh God. Would you wash me with the blood of Jesus? Would you, Father God, that sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's why the blood of Jesus is so powerful. One drop of blood. One drop of the blood of Jesus can save a nation. Hallelujah. Father God, we want to confess we want to confess. All men and women of faith should confess. Confess and humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. When we humble ourselves before God, we lie ourselves down. Let us, Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us right now. Everyone who prays this prayer. Everyone who stands with me in this prayer. Everyone who says amen and agrees with me in this prayer. Would you meet them right where they're at. Help us to prepare ourselves, oh God, for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, may you do that. Hallelujah. Be prepared. Be ready. Surrender is the first step to being prepared. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Keep praying. Keep believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Hallelujah. You're never on your own. Be prepared. Amen.